G'day Roosters, in today's presentation we're looking at two things, a short history of building engineering documentation and building information modelling or BIM and why it is the future. So what happened 200 years ago in documentation? Well drawings were done by hand, architect and engineer were one and the same person and buildings took years to build and materials were procured as needed on site. So, for example, Sir Christopher Wren's buildings, which he's a very famous architect, uh, in his era it was produced in this method. Now, a hundred years ago, drawings still by hand, architect and engineer still one and the same. Buildings took less time to build and materials estimated and procured based off design drawings. So here's some drawings and there's some cross sections there of that building of Henry Hunter, a famous architect in Hobart, Tasmania, whose buildings still look amazing in that fair city. A hundred years ago too, we can think of Eiffel, an architect and an engineer, and his incredible uh, Eiffel Tower. Some of the drawings from that era you can see are quite detailed and followed that method. Now, also a hundred years ago, we had the Woolloomooloo Wharf, which was the architect and the chief engineer were Henry Walsh. It was completed in 1915. It was the longest timbered piered wharf in the world, 410 metres long and 64 metres wide. Here's a picture of it during construction. And here's some drawings from that era, which took quite some time to procure and find, but these blueprints are amazing. Look at the detailed work there. And a cross section there of that wharf in one of the buildings on the wharf. You can still see some elements of this building and survives quite well. It's been restored a few years ago in Sydney today. Now, 25 years ago, drawings were still mostly by hand. Architect and engineer are specialist disciplines. Computers used to conduct independent engineering analysis now starts to happen. Building, uh, uh, more broadly that is, now building construction methods optimised based on design and materials estimated and procured in advance, measured by hand off design drawings. So here's some hand drawn reinforcement layouts of a suspended slab from about 25 years ago. And DOS based version of Wrapped here, which was a program that can do analysis on post tension and reinforced concrete structural systems. So 15 years ago, drawings are mostly produced in CAD systems, just about all CAD systems. Architect and engineer are very specialist disciplines, computers used to conduct highly complex independent engineering analysis and able to be modified in real time. Finite element modeling becomes quite popular. Building construction methods are highly optimized based on final design and materials estimated and procured in advance, measured off the drawings by hand. So here's an example of some CAD drawings of a steel uh, roof and a snap snapshot of analysis of a frame in a analysis software model, which I think was space gas from memory. So now we have building information modeling, the future of building documentation. So what is BIM? Well, BIM is a virtual copy of the physical and functional characteristics of a facility. It's a shared knowledge resource of information about a facility, a reliable basis of decisions during the building's life cycle from inception onward. Basically, it's a 3D model with lots of useful data. So let's look at what is BIM in pictures. So we have the 3D model in the center there. What can we get from it? Well, we can have advanced structural analysis clash detection and coordination. In my opinion, this is probably the best, the best thing after visualization. So we have construction drawings, the 4, 4D and 5D, which refer to 4D time and construction sequencing and 5D costs. A lot of uh, facilities manage, and obviously we've got facilities management there and visualization. So what are the advantages for designers? Well, it's fantastic visualization and coordination. Documentation generated from the model, changes are done in real time. Integration of model and analysis saves time. Structural, civil engineering, 
energy analysis and elimination of time wasted building separate models. Now those last two things, this, in my opinion, they still haven't perfected those. There's still a way to go in that. So here's an example of visualization and clash detection and a project that I worked on. Now at the time this was called Fraser's Broadway, but I think it's called One Central Park now. Now it's been completed. So the uh, red model there is the structural model and the gray model is the architect's model and they use Rhino to make the, co uh, the coordination here. And obviously you can see um, the clashes here. Uh, and so mistakes are obvious and they're more likely to be corrected. So this building's complete. You can see that cantilever bit that we're looking at there from the other way and the heliostat underneath it. So this project is in Sydney, Australia. So what are the advantages to builders? Well, automation of accurate quantities, automation of production and fabrication drawings, ability to plan construction sequencing in the model, ability to manage cash flow with a model, coordination before construction. So you can see here from this visualization of a building with lots of services, how much better it is to have a virtual model to coordinate things like this. So what are the advantages to clients? Well, there's good visualization, makes for better design and a more valuable asset. A good visualization and coordination reduces site errors and associated cost overruns. A greater understanding of a project before construction enables for better decisions. Building a working virtual model, the client can use into the future to make or manage the living building has some big advantages for the client as well. So here's an, a visualization example. Now this image was actually quite created quite some years ago, but uh, in Revit, native Revit, but you can see uh, the visualization is quite clear. If you pass this on to your client, they, you can see what you're trying to design here in this cafe. And uh, it's even getting even better today with what you can do with uh, visualization with software like 3ds and things like that so what is happening with bim now well bim is the benchmark for major project delivery i just think every major project has bim in it now uh, bim is used extensively for medium-sized projects too and um, domestic projects for houses in particular architects are using bim everywhere mostly because of the incredible visualization that you can give to your clients, which can really razzle dazzle them. Now, drafters, engineers and architects, which I forgot to write in this uh, dot point here, are finding it very hard to get a job if they don't have BIM skills. Now that was the Sydney market feedback, but I think you'll probably find that in all advanced markets globally. Thanks for listening to me today. You can check out my blog on what I'm doing lately at bimwise.com.